All right. This is my plot-based sequencer. You can see it gives you the x and y value down out of the outlets. We can hook that up to a synth. Here I have a tab os4 reading from this table. I have the x value going to the pitch and the y value going to the VCF. What's cool about plot is you can add additional points. So you can do that by holding control. Then you see the icon for the mouse changes. If I click here, when it's a plus sign, it adds another point. And now we have this playhead that's moving back and forth between these two points. So again, you just hold control, and then on the right side, it's a plus sign. On the left side, it's an X. So if you click the X, it deletes the point, like that. We can also change the speed over here. Some cool rhythm going on. I have this extra outlet labeled data. If we print that out, we can see what it's doing. So I have the next point, which is showing you the xy coordinates of the point that the playhead is moving towards. The current point, which is the point that it's starting from, and then the distance between those two points. So we can use that data in our patch. Let's say that instead of having this x value that's changing with the playhead, we just want the start position. So we can route current point, and then unpack the x and y values. And so we were using the x value from here. So let's use the x value from here. Let's say maybe we want to add some decay for the oscillator's output. Let's go ahead and add a V line. And we want the input for this to be jump to one. Now let's say in four milliseconds and then jump to zero in the input number of milliseconds after four milliseconds. And for the input, we want the distance between the two points. So let's do that. You can hear that decay now. So without this, and then with it,
So if we wanted, for some reason, we can also route out the next point. It's the same thing, we would just need to unpack those values. If you wanted to do something with that. I think that about covers it. There's also a hidden inlet at the top for setting the speed if you wanted to do that. Pure data starts to lag if you go too fast. I haven't implemented anything for that yet. I'm thinking what I have to do is just make it so that it doesn't try and update the visual elements at a certain point. Let's say over, I don't know, 300. There is another hangup though. If you drag one of these points outside of the boundaries, you can do that, but then as soon as you let go, you can't click on it again. There's a couple of solutions to this. The first is to just reset the whole thing. It's not a very good solution though. Let's say you had some cool pattern that you wanted to keep. So instead, what you can do is you can open this up and you see the inner workings of the patch. There's actually a sub patch here where this is being drawn to. So we can open that. And now you can see the different elements. It's a bit stretched out. But what we want to do is we want to grab this. Oops, not like that. It's playing tricks on me. I want to grab this and just move it back in. And there we go. Now it's usable again. So I guess if you wanted, you could set up a way of just using this window. Because then you wouldn't have that problem. There's no bounds inside this window. You know, if you, if you go over there, you can just scroll over. Well, <laughs> theoretically, it should work. <laughs> of course, now it's not working. Seems it seems a bit broken. <laughs> All right, on second thought, maybe don't do that. Ah, there we go. Just needed to refresh it. But hopefully this is useful. I can make another video explaining how it all works, if you're interested. But in short, it uses pure data's plot object. And then I'm using pointers to access the different elements and get like their x, y positions, and then using the distance formula to uh, move this playhead around and get the distance between the points. All right. Thanks for watching this video. I'll put the link to the patch in the video description.